Well, hi there. We're making progress on this neck. This is the neck from the Black Sovereign. And we've, we've done a refinish on it. We stripped all the finish off and put some clear coat on it. Still needs to cure a little bit so I can sand these rough patches and then I'll switch to spraying the paint and clear it up. But for now, we're going to start to work on the head a little bit. What's going to happen is this guitar here, which was a New York Pro, came with some pretty decent tuners. I've ordered some really good tuners for it, and its pretty decent tuners are going to get moved over to here. But as you can see, there's a difference in diameter. Right? That drill bit fits these ones. This drill bit fits these ones. So I'm going to drill this out. But because I've got a veneer, if I push the veneer from the back, it'll crack. So I'll come this way, I'll flip it over, I'll come the other way, and then I'll go and I will draw my first, or drill my first hole here. You can see that there's some tissue shoved in there. As you paint over these holes, it scrapes a bit of extra paint off the brush. And that'll, that'll run through and then give you grief on the other side. So I just plug these with tissue while I'm painting. a near perfect hole. Keep in mind that were I drilling these holes for the first time I would use a drill press to make sure that the drill went vertically. Because the older hole can act as a guide for the bigger holes I don't need to do that in this case. run here and I'll use a very sharp, very straight, straight razor that I'll just scrape across that little run and that knocks down the high spots very nicely. So I need to be quite flat because I'm going to paint a logo on here and if it's not sitting flat, the paint may not lay within the logo and it might leak from underneath my mask. Just take a very quick, very light run across the whole thing. That just knocks the, any high spots down. Don't worry that it's hurting the gloss because we're going to put the gloss back on later on. It has to be a bit of a roughened up surface or the paint won't stick properly. You can get peeling later on. So I find that 600 wet sand works pretty good for that. So I'll just go in a little bit of a circular motion and I'm just looking to kind of scuff it up and knock down any high spots. So every once in a while, I'll just take a rag and I'll dry it off so that I can see what's going on. Got a little bit of gloss left here, a little bit of gloss left here, in here a little bit. So those are the areas that I need to concentrate on just a little bit more. Right here is where the logo is going to go. So this part here needs to be sanded the nicest. The other stuff I'll get another chance to touch it up when I put layers of clear coat over top of the logo. And I just blow the moisture out of the, the hole so that it doesn't soak into the wood. And this is now ready for a mask. Before I put the mask on, I use a piece of tape as a straight edge and I center it along the dots on the neck. And that gives me a reference point so that I know if the logo is level with respect to the center line of the neck. This part of the J, I want right about there. I want the M up high enough that it's not too close to the edge of the wood. Then a fairly parallel line between the tape and the mask. And I'll rub it down with my finger. This is a tool for burnishing masks onto printed circuit boards. It works very well for this application because I can get a very high pressure to make sure that the edges of this are pushed down very nicely to the board. That'll keep the paint from leaking. The other thing that'll keep the paint from leaking is to make my spray coats, particularly the first coat, kind of a dust coat. And that'll seal the edges to keep subsequent coats from running underneath. We'll take our back mask tape off here. Right? P 
peeling it very carefully. Notice I'm folding it on top of itself as I'm peeling it. That keeps it from peeling up the mask as it comes. This is some fairly fine stuff in this mask here. Right, I'll just very gently burnish it again. Take my knife and cut some reliefs here so I can fold this down. Then we tape it. I usually do the entire headstock with tape. That way I can be sure that where I'm actually spraying it, I don't get anything getting onto the other surfaces that I don't want painted. For the neck itself, I take a bit of uh, butcher's paper like this, wrap the neck up in it, put a piece of tape around, fold it over, put a piece of tape around here, and then I'll seal this area up with a couple of wraps and tape. As you can see, I'm not too worried about getting it perfectly tidy because as long as it's sealed well, it's only going to be on there for a few minutes and then it comes back off again. The paint's now cured for about uh, half an hour, 40 minutes, which is about the right amount of time for this particular type of paint. Let us get this unwrapped. So when you get to the mask itself, you want to hold this down. You want to pull the mask as vertically as you can. You don't want to go to the side at all because that will tend to drag paint. But if you go vertically, it tends to break the mask away from the paint and leave a nice clean edge. I don't mind if there's little areas left because I will get those a little bit later on. This is what this tool is for help get into the nook and, nooks and crannies and lift the mask straight up in those areas so it comes off nicely. I've let the, I've let the paint cure overnight. There was a little bit of touch up where there was a little bit of fluff around the end of it. I just very carefully used a razor blade to move that away and then cleaned the area carefully with a paper towel, a little piece of paper towel, and some rubbing alcohol. Now the neck's ready for its clear coat. There'll be about four layers, four to five layers of clear coat put over this, and then it'll be sanded and polished.